Amber, I am so happy to have you here. Like this is the first time in a very long time that I have had someone else on my channel. I love everything that you do. I love the work that you do. You give big boss bitch Virgo vibes. I'm happy to be here and like to dive into all things YouTube and like figure out what works for all of us because YouTube, She's a big baddie and we all need to approach her in a different way. So I'm super excited for this conversation today. We're going to dive into using YouTube and podcasting together. This is something that is a big question that happens um, for online business owners. We know that long form content is the way to a sustainable marketing strategy. So many people want to listen to podcasts and also some people want to visualize, um, you know, information. There's always this little battle between what is the platform that we should use. And I wanted to have you up here because you actually have both. And I cannot wait to hear about your strategy, your perspective, and then us kind of going into like riffing off of that. But before we start, oh my gosh, do you mind introducing yourself and telling the girls who you are? So anybody that's not familiar with me, my name is Amber Figlow and I am a content strategist. And I really specialize in helping small business owners create content, not only consistently, sustainably, but like we need to make it more fun. Let's be honest, because we've gotten away from the pure essence of what it means to create content for our business. Like algorithms aside, we need to like enjoy it again and like sell our shit, you know? <laughs> Come from a very long corporate career in marketing, um, been an entrepreneur for five, the last five years. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. And I love all things content. I get a little nerdy about it. And like you already said, Virgo, Type A, ENTJ, Enneagram 3, if you subscribe to any of those things, I'm all of those. <laughs> so I am the person to come in and help you organize and make this sustainable as well. <laughs> Love your perspective around creating a structure around this so that it is sustainable. And I teach a little bit about that to help YouTube be a little bit less intimidating. If you don't mind um, going a little bit into what do you typically do right now um, for your YouTube channel and for your podcast, just to give everyone an overview? So basically the way that I've approached YouTube and podcasting over the last three years, I have really just tried to maintain consistency on YouTube, at least posting once a week. You know, we take breaks here and there. That's totally fine. But I've been doing YouTube consistently for the last three years. Listen, this isn't just like a little influencer girly thing. Like, oh my God, so many people have been asking me. Like, no, legit people were asking me for so long, when are you starting a podcast? And it was always on the back burner for years and years and years. And I was like, I just don't have the time. I want to be able to invest money, invest my resources into a podcast. And I just realized I used it as an excuse almost because YouTube and podcasting not only go hand in hand, but there's a really low barrier entry to both. You know, you can do so much with the equipment you have, and it might just take you a little time, might just be a little bit of a learning curve. So back at the beginning of this year, um, I decided to, I was like, you know what? I'm going to stop with the excuses. I've been doing YouTube. YouTube for a long time now. And I'm just going to start using the audio from my YouTubes and put it out as a podcast. And that's exactly how my podcast started. My podcast is called The Content Collective. And I used it as another avenue for people to consume my content. I was like, maybe you watch on YouTube, maybe you listen to the podcast, or if you're one of my super fans, you do both, who knows? But it was just like another way for me to leverage a marketing channel, especially in the time of like, like I kind of already alluded to, algorithms are crazy. Uh, we're all overwhelmed. And I was like, you know what? I need to give the people what they want and show up for them in the way that they want to consume my content. Why would I not do that? So that's kind of been my strategy thus far. Now that I'm six months into consistently podcasting alongside my YouTube, I'm starting to strategize, okay, what can this podcast be? Can I do some more uh, exclusive content where it's not posted on my YouTube channel? Can I do more interview style? Do I have the capacity for that? So that's where I'm, I'm kind of in exploration phase right now with my podcast, which I'm excited about, but that's kind of the gist of what I've been doing. I have been thinking about having a podcast um, as well, right? And I used to have one um, in the past and, and I really did enjoy it. It was great. I leaned more into YouTube, right? And at the very beginning, you know, when podcasts, like, and this was like years ago, maybe like six, like seven or eight years ago, where it was, it was more of a taboo to post YouTube yeah. videos and, and strip the audio into it. And so I'm still thinking 
in that realm, right? I'm not a boomer, but like it's giving major boomer vibe. You know what I'm saying? We're old school marketers. Like it comes to like, I tell people I went to college like right after the recession in 2010, like a long time ago. So it's like we learn these tactics and we have to realize that these spaces are evolving and we kind of have to evolve our mindset along with it. Cause I feel you there. I, that was my biggest hesitation for a long time. I was like, it's the same damn content. I'm like, yes, I'm adjusting it here and there a bit, but I'm like, people consume in different ways now. So that's the thing is it's like before you were either all in on YouTube or all in on a podcast. And I'm like, some people want to listen to that podcast when they're dropping off their kids in the morning. And some people want to sit down and have YouTube on their iPad as they're working. So it's like, we have to show up for those people in the ways that they want to consume. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I believe me, I had that hesitation too. <laughs> I have had to get over that that old way of, of thinking um, in terms of marketing because what's even happening for YouTube, you guys, is that YouTube is leaning all in to podcasting as well to where now it's just another type of video that you add to your YouTube channel now. Now the word podcast is kind of just another turn, like another uh, kind of equivalent to a piece of content in your marketing ecosystem. <laughs> that's literally, that's literally what exactly. it is. And, and especially yep. as podcasts become more video friendly, that like there's such a push for um, prioritizing like video while you're doing podcasts, right? And so, yes, obviously there are people who want to consume in audio, but also there are people who watch podcasts on video, right? Which is, which is, why Usually. YouTube is leaning all into that. And so doing that, that change, that made me start thinking, mm, maybe the concept of podcast, I need to stop calling it a podcast and just see it as this is the audio experience that people can have. And then this is the visual experience that someone can have. And whatever I want to call it, maybe it's like a series, you know, like what typically someone would, would call like a a podcast um, show, you know what I'm saying? Could just be a series on my YouTube channel that is then put into yes. a podcast playlist, right? So that it can be um, be listened to and viewed in the YouTube music app. But also I could strip that and add it to Spotify and all those other things. And so really shifting yes. my perspective on what is the word podcast, like really kind of erasing that that meaning, that that yeah. definition that has been here since like forever of what it is. What do you think about that? Yeah, so it's so funny that you mentioned that because I came across like a meme on the internet a couple days ago and is so relevant to what we're talking about here. A lot of the children don't know where podcasting came from. And I'm like, it's, it's a combination of two things. Podcasting is when we had iPods, you know, back in the day and broadcasting, that was podcast. And then it was this audio, kind of new experience. And I'm like, it has shifted so much. We don't have iPods anymore. We don't have just broadcasting anymore. So as the word podcast in and of itself, I feel like has shifted and like this cultural change. And I love that you mentioned that. And one quick anecdote for the girls out there that missed our, we had like a little pre-conversation and Jamar's whole thing of showing up to little parties, you bring the French onion dip and the chips. And the way I like to think about combining your the way we're gonna view podcasts in YouTube. Lay's chips, they come in wavy, they come in ruffles, they come in just a plain old Lay's chip. Think of that as those pieces of content. So your podcast might be the wavy. It's meant for the person that wants to use the French onion dip. But think of the like, the thin little Lay's chip. That's somebody that just wants to consume it a little bit, you know, differently. So just think of it that way. It's the same, it's the same damn potato, but we're consuming it in different ways. We are altering it to fit what people actually want. That's kind of the way I approach it. And I love that we had that conversation before because I'm like, I'm gonna throw in a food uh, anecdote here. I was like, it's always my favorite thing to do. <laughs> now that pe people know and understand, like, you know, this is how we're looking at YouTube videos. This is how we're looking at actually just content overall, okay? Can you walk us through how in the heck are you doing it, right? So, and I wanna know, like, you know, I, is it as simple as recording, rec like recording the content and then optimizing for you to like, how, what do you do differently when, when it comes to the YouTube content and the podcasting content? Yeah, that's such a great question. So for me, my priority 
always has been and probably for the foreseeable future will always be YouTube. So I am prioritizing that as I'm recording, as I'm doing research for topics. Um, thanks to Jamar, I, you got me on vidIQ. So like I really prioritize that first and foremost because YouTube is my larger platform. It's one I actually enjoy creating a little bit more on right now. But with the notion going into recording my YouTube videos, I'm not just going to, yes, I just set up my camera and I, I film horizontally and to make sure I have that good format for YouTube. But I also did invest, like, I don't know if you guys are watching um, the YouTube version of this. You can see I have my mic here and headphones and I do prioritize the audio quality as well as I am recording that YouTube video. Not only is it a better YouTube experience, but it makes it easier for the podcast experience as well. Other than that though, the only thing that I do differently for these two pieces of content is for YouTube, sometimes I have those visuals. I'll do the screen recording. I'll have the pop-up image, the B-roll, things like that. For podcasts, you have to understand people cannot see that. So either in the editing process, I have to take that part out, maybe replace it with something different, dive a little deeper in an explanation because I don't have those visual cues. Or sometimes, I'll be honest, there are certain videos where I'm like, this is a screen-based tutorial, it is 10 minutes. This is not gonna make sense as a podcast. I will record that exclusive episode kind of talking about something similar, but it is more friendly for audio. So I really am still kind of playing with that and seeing, you know, how far I want to take those things. But I truly try and prioritize both with a little bit of a preference towards the YouTube type stuff. And then I, I basically repurpose all inside of Descript. It's my editing software and it allows you to do both podcast and video. So I make it kind of simple in that way. And I think the lesson here is to show that you still have a focus platform. You still primarily um, create content through the lens of one platform, but you are staying cognizant of the ways that you are going to be repurposing this in the future. Exactly. And like the biggest thing that I always tell people, YouTube might not be your thing. Podcasting might not be your thing. If you, maybe if you're a writer and like you love writing a blog post, girl, take that blog post, speak it into a microphone. You don't even got to do the video thing right now. That's totally okay. Get comfy maybe with the podcasting avenue and eventually add in YouTube, but start with your, your strengths and what you enjoy creating. I'm long-winded, as you guys can tell, I love talking. So YouTube works real well for me. I'm like, I'm both visual and I can't shut up. <laughs> so I'm like, this is perfect for me. Whereas I know that's not everybody's strong point. Not everybody enjoys it. So it's one of those things that lean into those strengths, pick one or the other, and eventually introduce the other one. So that's the kind of way I approach it. When, and also another takeaway um, that you just said, I want to make sure that the girls are getting it, um, is that it doesn't have to always be one YouTube video equals one podcast, right? It's just, if it doesn't work, yeah. don't, try to make it work. Yes. If you really want to provide that value, maybe you need to repackage it in a different way. 98% of the other time is that you're doing the repurposing where you're just clipping it right into the audio like version. But if it is, yeah, like a how to very screen share based tutorial, maybe that is not the best, um, the best experience in audio, but maybe there's something that you could talk about that relates to people that would inspire them to take action and to maybe even watch yes. the full screen, to watch the full tutorial on your channel. Yeah. Like to give a, an example to everybody is I recently, and I've done this video kind of video style a couple of times is I really walk people through Canva organization. And I'm like talking about, you know, my YouTube video will show the step-by-step -step process of organizing your Canva, I can't convert that into an audio based podcast. It would make zero sense. But what I can do is record a separate podcast episode around the topic of organization inside of Canva, inside of creating your content and talk about the mentality behind it and why you want to do it, dive into a bit more mindset. And then my call to action at the end is if you actually want to learn how to do this, go watch my YouTube video. You can still make it part of your ecosystem, make them tie back together without a ton of extra effort. Yes, it might take you another 10 minutes to record the podcast, but think about it this way, is you're giving a great experience for your audience, no matter where they're listening, where they're consuming, and they can always take it a step further by consuming that other piece of content. So yeah, I love that you mentioned that. I think that um, one of the other questions that I have for you is time. I know a lot of, cause that's also a um, objection that I get whenever it comes to YouTube. And so here we are talking about 
um, YouTube and podcasting and how to make it happen. Um, do you mind sharing a little bit of light of how much time you dedicate to executing these two platforms the way that, that you do? I want to kind of start with a word of caution or a little bit of a transparency moment and let everybody know that I am far enough along in my career, in my business. I do actually have a content manager who does help me with the editing portion of things and kind of the workflow. So I always want to give that caveat. Uh, if you don't have a ton of time, but you have the resources to do so outsource certain pieces of this, number one. Number two, if you don't have the money or resources to outsource, you gotta understand it might take a little bit more time. So I always give that caveat and let people know. But for me, the way that I approach this YouTube podcasting uh, kind of duo is that I am a batching girly and I know we hate the word batching, but I try and tell people you're already batching things in your business and in your life. Girls, we take an everything shower once a week where we shave ourselves head to toe, hair mask, lip mask, we do all of it, that's batching. Or your meal prep, uh, you know, whoever's listening, if you do meal prep on a Sunday, that's batching. We need to translate that into our content creation. It's okay. So basically I like to approach it in, I do all my research, uh, you know, once a quarter typically is where I'm researching my topics, my, my ideas and what I'm gonna produce over the next 12 weeks. And then from there each month, I sit down and I script all the videos. I am doing my keyword research even deeper. And basically I like to record all four episodes, four to five episodes at one time. I take one day a month and I really do prioritize getting it done. And the why I, this works best for me, and I know that seems overwhelming at first, I can knock all of it out in just a couple hours. I've refined my process to a point where I am recording, it's automatically in my computer, it's already out, uploaded so that my content manager can edit it. I have refined this process so that I can get all four to five videos done in a few hours. The way that I am able to do so is because of all that prep work and things like that, but then it allows me the flexibility to take that content and you know, four to five hours every week, I'm repurposing it on all my other channels. So it is time consuming, I'm not gonna lie. C content creation does take time, but it's one of those things you have to make time for it like you would any other business activity. You know, we have our client work days, we have our meeting days, we have our whatever days, insert whatever you do here. You've gotta assign, just try one day a month and just knock out all those videos. And I promise you, it'll change the way you approach content. So in my membership, the Low Lift Club, um, I have like a module in there where it's to really identify your content flow. We could tell you what to do, what you, what needs to happen, but it's up to you, to, to the actual person, to figure out how that works within their schedule, right? And batching is just one of like the best ways to do it. I want you to listen to what, um, to what Amber is saying because that is how Amber optimizes her time, okay? That is how, that is what works for her. Also understand that batching just means that you're doing more than one thing, more than one thing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and, exactly. And um, one of the, the things that I do, like this is how I, I um, do mine just for YouTube, but um, I have, I operate on A and B weeks, right? So every other week Ooh. I batch certain things together. Once a month or once every, it just depends on how much um, ideas I come up with, I ideate, right? So I ideate like, what are the things that I, what is in my brain? What are the things that I'm most passionate about, right? And I do that probably either, either once every, like either one to three months. It, it, it just depends on how, how much I be feeling, you know what I'm saying? I have the ideation part, right? And so I come up with with the topics. I do some of like the title. I figure out the title and then I figure out what I want the thumbnail um, text or creative direction to be, right? And so that is my ideation thing. And so I do that either once a quarter or once a month, depending on how much, how much I come up with. And then that's one batch, right? And then on Mondays, Every other Monday, you'll see me batching my scripts. And then on Wednesday, yes. you'll see me batching my videos. And that for me, I try to do two videos. You know, if I'm feeling froggy, depend, you know, I may end up doing, doing another one. It, it just kind of just depends, right? And then I don't edit. I don't want to edit. That I don't want to. I have no, no, me I have no desire to edit. And so I happily invest in a video editor. Stick around because I'm going to end up doing a um, a YouTube video on how to like hire and vet a video editor. Like how do I go through that process? But you may want to maybe like edit 
on like Friday, right? And then it's like, and and then for me, yeah. it's a it's a rest week in between, and so that's how I kind of like keep keep my energy levels going. That's the same way of how like Amber, you do all that stuff in one time a month, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it just depends on what works for you. Absolutely. And find what works best for you. I'm glad you brought that up because that's the point I always try and stress too. Is it's like, you can look at what I do um, and take parts of it that you like and take parts of it out that you don't like. But for me, I, if you guys follow me, if you know me, I do not do my hair and makeup. I, it is just not my favorite thing to do, but I like to be a little slightly more presentable for YouTube. I'm doing my hair and makeup one time a month and I'm like, this is all I got to do. I don't want to show up and do that every week. That's just not who I am as a person or how I show up in my personal brand. Vast majority of the time, even this right now, I don't have makeup on. I'm like, this is so not my thing. So that's why I love batching all in one day. And then I can do all these other things with the rest of my month and not focus on the longer form content. And again, it is taken me years to work up to that just know that and to kind of bounce off like the editing thing or kind of breaking apart your days whatever your strength is for me i love ideation oh my god i could sit down all day long i love helping people through it i love doing it for myself i could take eight hours and just come up with a million content ideas i really can but i struggle with the editing because i'm a bit of a perfectionist and i'm like that i outsourced or if you don't have the resources to outsource yet, invest in a tool like Descript, Riverside, something like that, that has AI tools that will help you do the heavy lifting and editing. When I started, I don't know about you, Jamar, but when I started my YouTube journey, I was editing in Premiere Pro, line by line, like trying to split and clip things. And I'm like, it would take me hours to edit a YouTube video. If I tried to edit my YouTube video now, I'm using all those AI tools. It's gonna take me 30 minutes at most because I don't got the time. <laughs> it's like, nope. <laughs> Again, I have no skill oh, in yeah. editing. I, I say that yeah. very proudly. I say that I am the strategist, you know, but I, but post-production is its own career. Like there are so many, there are video editing, media editing, and animated graphics, you know what I'm saying? Post-production supervision, like that's a whole industry. Yes, there are tools to help make it easy, but I am just, you know, just in case anybody want to come from my neck and being like, oh, you don't even edit your own video? Honey, no, I sure don't. I sure don't. And I think this is a good lesson for people to understand that like you can start at any level, right? And But it just depends on how much time yes. are you willing to invest to learn that skill set or do you have the resources to outsource, right? And so for me, I teach everyone that, you know, you could just do two videos a month, right? Amber, you're amazing because you can oh, yeah. do four videos a month. That's awesome. You know what I'm saying? There is no, look, I'm here for it. If you yes. can do it and you have a system in place, honey, you are high functioning, yep. Virgo energy. You do that shit. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But for but for people who, who may not, not be can. able to do that, or maybe if you just, just want to start, two videos a month is, is so, it's such a great doable thing. More than and enough. It's more than enough. Yeah. And so take everything that we're yeah. saying and just kind of see how you can do it, especially if you're doing a podcast and YouTube channel together. Now, Amber, yes. I would like to go into kind of like the, the last leg of this because we talked about like the plan, we talked about like how we're doing it, but I know the, the organization side of you is so genius and and i know you offer these resources in like your programs and things and so i would love it if you don't mind doing like a little screen share of how you be making this shit shake you know what i'm saying <laughs> so that people can really see can actually see your genius because it's not just all in your head. You ha you have these things like mapped out. Okay, so I quickly wanna show you guys like what the behind the scenes looks like. So basically the way that I like to approach my content is through something known as like a hero content strategy. And that's what allows me to do YouTube and podcast. But basically you can see here is like once a quarter, I'm actually due to, to do this very, very soon. I'll come in here and I will just like start ideating. I will put all my ideas in here and I will start filling in exactly what needs to be done. So it's like here, um, I select each week, I have a new YouTube video and a new podcast surrounding that topic. But basically the way I like to organize this is I have different tabs for the different things going on. And inside each of these, let me show you one that we um, had scheduled last month. But basically this is the true behind the scenes. I know what date I'm publishing. I know the status of it. And this is what kind of helps streamline my workflow. I have my entire video script here and as you guys can see this is one thing and I don't know how you feel about this Jamar I don't script every single word I literally give myself talking points I have an intro and outro three main talking points and like three sub talking points for each of those so you can kind of see those here 
I have my, my YouTube description with my call to actions, all my video timestamps, the title, and this is one that only had one thumbnail, which quick side note, how do we, how awesome is it that we can now AB test our thumbnails? And for anybody that doesn't know, you can try like three different thumbnails on YouTube now, and it will show the one that's like top performing to your audience, which I love. I just started doing it in the last couple of videos and I'm obsessed with it. Um, and then my tags. So basically this is like everything that I need to go and create this YouTube video. And then from there, I do the same thing kind of for my podcast. So you guys can see here, that basically for these episodes, these were screen share episodes. Um, so creating a month of Instagram content in one hour in Canva. This is the one that I was alluding to earlier. This is my content calendar for, for last month. But basically, I had to record an original audio because I didn't want to have that screen share audio on my podcast. But what a finished podcast looks like, like I'll show you guys here. We'll pull this one up. But basically I have, again, everything that I need. Here's my podcast graphic, the podcast title, podcast description. And then I take it a little bit of a step further for my show notes. I kind of add in a blog post. So I have a podcast summary. I have this highlights, the resources, and then I have an entire blog post just for a little SEO component. But the, basically what I want you guys to take away from this is I do have a free content planner template uh, that you guys can have for free. You guys can do this with any one of the channels that you wanna show up on. You would just rename this and you could say YouTube, you could say podcast, anything like that. But it's just a way to keep your shit organized. That's all this is, this is like a, fun little behind the scenes of like, you can insert your new content ideas. You can like move these things around, but just kind of keeping up with your workflow visually is like the best way to stay on top of this kind of stuff. So if you guys wanna see how this like process actually works, like taking a YouTube video and transforming it into a podcast, I do that all inside of Descript and it's like, extracting audio and it's it's a couple of clicks it's not anything too crazy but we are going to plug a youtube video a little tutorial showing you guys exactly how i approach that um super super simple and again even if you don't have an editor or you don't have a content manager you don't have anybody helping you descript and some of the other tools out there will do this for you in almost an instant and it just makes it so so easy and basically all i do is i take the audio from my youtube video add an intro and an outro and move on with my day vast majority of the time is kind of what the podcast episodes look like i feel like you've given us so much information and i hope that everyone has is able to take away like at least one or two tangible like bits to help even encourage them to start leveraging both their youtube channel and podcast and see how seamless it can really be like remember the word podcast the what it meant before is really a thing of, of the past now let's just think about how are you going to be getting your message across to people and think about it in a way that you're just creating content and creating mediums that best fit them. Think yes. about it more as like you are a network, right? You have you have the streamers, you got people that got cable, you know what I'm saying? Like there's yep. so many different yep. ways for people to consume your content and to really look at and when, and when you start looking at it, looking at it that way, it starts becoming so much more clearer. And so I love I love your Lay's example. And so if you guys watching want to like learn more about launching or creating your YouTube channel, I have a free YouTube quick start guide that will give you everything that you need to get started in a more strategic way. I have like tutorials and resources all inside that guide. So I also will link that um, down below for you to grab as well. I am on vast majority of platforms. The only one I have given up on is X, Twitter, whatever we're calling it nowadays. So you guys can find me basically anywhere, Amber Figlo on all the platforms. If you like YouTube, I got a YouTube channel. If you like podcasts, I got a podcast. If you wanna like hit me up and like get some advice, questions, anything like that, the best place to DM me is actually gonna be Instagram. It's one of the only places that you can privately message me because I've turned that off basically everywhere else. <laughs> I was like too many channels. Um, but that is the kind of the place that I love. Threads is a great time to like interact with my crazy thoughts, but basically everywhere you guys can oh, find me. Love that. And if y'all want to find me at Jamar Diggs everywhere, threads, Instagram, YouTube, you know, it's a vibe everywhere to be quite honest. Honestly, it is. Amber, you <laughs> and I in a room together, like it's just, just, I'm loving this energy. I love this vibe. Energy. <laughs> Me too. I was like, we just get it. And just know the one final thought I want to leave with people is do what's best for you. We can give you the strategy. We can give you the best practices and this, the best strategy by far 
for you is the one that works for you, that works with your schedule, your mentality, the way that you wanna approach content. So take everything that we've said here, use bits and pieces, and just like go on about your YouTube journey, go on about your podcast journey. We wanna see it and we wanna see you thrive. Period, and on that note, thank y'all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.